Okay, today we're going to upholster a couple of shop bar stools in leather. It's a great technique to show because same type of techniques apply for bar stools for the kitchen or a lot of things you might run into in household reupholstery. Let's get right into it. We have a few colors to choose from in our leather. We've got this deep burgundy red color, some greens, but in the end I think it's this mottled brown that'll win the day. So we've selected this for our color. We'll go ahead and start patterning it up and cut those pieces to shape. Okay, so it looks like we have about 13 and 3 quarters from seam to seam. To that, add a half inch seam allowance on either side. That brings us to 14 and 3 quarters. And from that number, go ahead and subtract a factor for leather stretch. My rule of thumb for leather stretch is subtract about a quarter inch for every 10 inches of panel width. Figuring the width of the boxing is a little bit easier. From the seam down to the bottom of the plywood, we have about 3 and a quarter inches. To that, add the half inch seam allowance for the top. You get three and three quarters. We'll add about an inch for wrap under, so four and three quarters will be our finished boxing width. So just use some painter's tape to attach a small scrap of leather to the hide. And that'll just give you a spot for an awl or a center punch to mark your center point. And from there, we're using this little canvas patterning tool um, from Sailrite. You could make one from wood and drill accurately spaced holes, but it's probably just easier to grab this acrylic version that is already pre-drilled. So we're looking for 14 and a half, so find the seven and a quarter mark and we'll go ahead and make that circle. Leather marking pen is really helpful for drawing out your parts. It's one of these things that easily shows the cut line, but yet you can wipe it away with a damp cloth. It doesn't leave a permanent mark, so that's nice. So the little 8 and 10 inch shears are fine for cutting the circles and when your pieces have shapes, but when it's just straight lines, it might be a good idea to break out the big scissors. The big scissors. So the circumference we measured around the bar stool was 45 and a quarter, and that allows half inch seam allowance on either side. We're not going to fully commit to a finished length until we have sewn most of the perimeter of the seam, so we'll leave it about 48 inches for now. Okay, so we're looking for a half inch seam allowance. You can use magnetic guides if you like, otherwise just follow the scribe line on the throat plate of the leather work machine. We'll go ahead and hold our threads back to get a few stitches set, and we'll also back tack because we're starting about three or four inches from the end of the boxing. That'll just leave us that extra room to be able to finish that seam when we come around to the other side. So we'll go ahead and get started and back tack our starting point here. I've got my boxing on the bottom and the round portion of the stool is up top. And so I'm just kind of steering this circle into position so it all gets sewn with a half inch seam allowance. The boxing is really just being fed in by the walking foot. Not much to handle with that. It's more just steering this top round layer. Once you have a few stitches laid, just check that you are getting a good stitch just like your sample and there's no loose threads on the bottom. I'm always amazed how many people go ahead and sew up their whole project before they realize that something's not stitching right. So very important to check your work as you go. And with that sail right leather work, we can really just control the process stitch by stitch. 
I'm not worried about the machine taking off on me at this point. I'm just simply concentrating on aligning my edges as we sew this blind seam. Okay, looks like we're off to a good start. We'll motor on. So when you come around to the end of your boxing, you want to stop three or four inches from the end and go ahead and back tack this blind seam. Okay, so if we flip this right side out, we can see that there's a nice seam forming there but it doesn't have a great shape yet. It doesn't have a rigid line and that's what the top stitch will add. So this is just our initial blind stitch. The top stitch is what will really make this. So at this point we need to mark where our boxing ends are gonna come together, trim them, making sure to leave a half inch seam allowance on either side and sew them up with a blind stitch. Now when I'm marking on the show side of leather, I do like to use a leather pen so that it can be erased, but when I'm marking on the suede side, I just use a ballpoint pen. Gives you a nice clean cut line. Just remember to leave enough for your seam allowance. Sometimes I'll just use these cardboard strips because they're conveniently half inch wide. It's a nice easy way to strike your sew line. Let's head back over to the sewing machine where we can close up this boxing and finish the perimeter seam. Now with cloth projects, you'll probably pin or clip things together, but with leather, oftentimes you'll want to staple the pieces together just so they don't shift when you're sewing them. These are plier staplers. They're basically just like an office stapler, except for they have a longer nose and it makes them easy to use for sewing applications. Okay, now pull your staples. This will take you about 15 seconds. So we have a nice seam that's closed up the boxing, but we're still open on the perimeter seam. And for that, what we want to do is fold open the seam allowance and staple that in. And that's, this will just control everything as we complete that perimeter seam. Just stay well within the seam allowance so you don't hit a staple with your needle and you should be good to go. Now once that top stitch is laid in there, it'll really clean up the look. We'll have a top stitch along here, but here it's just a blind stitch. We're not gonna French seam that or anything. What I've found is it really looks the most natural if it's just a simple blind seam where the boxing comes together. Just make sure the seam allowance stays turned towards the boxing side and slightly spread and separate the seam as you make that top stitch. A lot of people are worried about making a top stitch that actually shows, but it's no different than any other seam. Practice a little bit on it. One thing I would say is take a minute to adjust your forward and back stitch length so those are equalized. That way when you terminate the seam, you can get the prettiest appearance possible. We have lengthened our stitch length just a little bit. I like eight or 10 stitches per inch for the blind seams, but I increase the stitch length slightly to five or six stitches per inch for the top stitch and that's just purely because it's decorative. This Sailrite leather work was really put together to sew small leather craft items like belts and wallets, luggage tags, things like that. But you know, this little demonstration just shows that hey, you can do small upholstery projects on it too. Why not? You're all set up for leather with it with a leather point needle and 92 weight thread. Might as well use it for other things too. 
like reupholstering some stools. Just going with a nice seal color thread that blends in with this Appalachian Trail leather from Leather Hide Store. It's gorgeous stuff. you have a machine that's capable of leather, it really makes your task a lot easier. The reason most people think that sewing leather is hard is because they've tried sewing leather on a home machine. Well, sewing leather on a home machine is hard, if not impossible. And just look what that top stitch does for us. You can see how the leather works as it's heading into the presser foot. And then you can see how it's flattened and further shaped as it exits after it's been top stitched. And that's really a helpful effect for leather upholstery trim. We won't grade you on it, but as you come back to terminate your seam, see if you can plunk the stitch right back down into the same hole that you started with. And you can just back tack a couple times. There we go. All done. Even if you back tack the top stitch, use a hand sewing needle to pass the threads back to the underside of the cushion and tie them off. Add a reference line just about 7 eighths of an inch from the outside of the wood base. That will give you a nice line to pull to when you staple your cover in place. Okay, it's time to staple the cover down. Let's start in the four cardinal directions and then flip it top side and we'll make sure that everything looks centered and straight before we continue. A little bit of pressure down. You don't want to force it, but just see if you can get close to your reference line. Pop a couple on one side and then go directly opposite. So you get good natural tension across the cover. There we go. I'm going to do one more. Okay. And then we'll work in our other two cardinal directions here. You don't want to tack it down too securely. Treat these first few staples as potentially temporary because if you flipped it topside and you realized, hey, even though I have my reference lines, I'm a little bit lopsided, now would be the time to make that correction. You could easily pull those four or so staples and reset things to start yourself off on the right foot. You should be able to expect results just like this on your very first try, so long as you have a good sewing machine and a little bit of basic equipment in the shop, staple gun, some good layout tools, good scissors, but all in all it's not an expensive proposition to get set up for some basic upholstery, but I do encourage you to start with the right tools. It will lead to a fun and enjoyable experience rather than a frustrating one as many people find when they start to set out to do leather upholstery with a home sewing machine. It usually doesn't end well. Now normally I would be replacing the dust cover. This is just a non-woven dust cambric but since this one's going to stay right in my shop I'm not too worried about it. We'll go ahead and just reuse the old one. Okay, we'll get this little shop stool back in service. It's a fun little project. I hope you get a chance to give it a try yourself.
I'm Willie Sandry. Thanks for watching.